breathe. Can you hear it? Welcome to Relay. Shiver. And we are live. Hello and welcome to the Relay Station. We are a bunch of angry bearded men, except for Shiver, who's an angry balding man. And except for Nakara, who's not really angry, he's Canadian and really, really nice. And also except for Paul, who's a consummate professional in all things, an historic historian of epic proportions, performing informing video recordings. So I will append my initial statement. Welcome to the Relay Station. We are three nice guys and me, an angry bearded man. Let's go. So angry. So, so angry. Oh. Uh. So, yeah, I guess I, I, didn't, I didn't change the thing behind Eric. Uh, I didn't. I didn't green screen him properly. I'm terrible at this. That's a green screen. I just. I'm relieved. <laughs> uh, please don't. That's that's against us. <laughs> Let's just put that. Though it is a, though it is apparently in Star Citizen. So yes. But I, I hear doing the audio for it is absolutely oh. fine, Paul. <laughs> it is, apparently. <laughs> Thanks for the uh, subscription triangularity. How's everyone doing out there in in the chat world? And uh, how are you guys? Sure, how are you doing? I'm tired. It's been too hot, but the heat is gone. Nakara, how about you? I can sleep at night. I'm all right. Paul? Excellent. I'm fighting with my computer, but I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear you've been having some fun times. Yeah, you actually fixed it, sort of, at least. Uh, for those who don't know, Eris was on the captain's table last night, last time, and we had a blue, I had a blue screen of death, and as I was trying to bring everything back up to continue the, the podcast, I didn't mention any of my symptoms, I just said I've been having blue screens of death, and Eris says, I'm going to stop you right here, Paul. I don't know exact. I don't know anything about your your computer. I don't know what your symptoms are, but I can tell you what your problem is. I'm like, all right, tell me your power supply. And I'm like, oh my god, it probably is my power supply. And then everyone else and is like, well, well, how old is your power supply? And you're like, six years. Six years. Power <laughs> supply. It's a power supply. Oh my god, power supplies don't last six years. It's you don't think because or you you wouldn't think of that because. It's the, it's the simplest. It's just a freaking converter. It converts um, yep. AC, uh, uh, AC, AC to DC. To DC. Or... That's it. That's yeah, all it does. It's operating under incredible heat and current all the time. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's, uh... but it's but it's built as like a brick. You could probably bash someone's face in with with a with a uh, oh, with yeah, a power totally. supply easily. Things the things are built like 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 tr like uh, battleships in terms of their strength. So you don't think about it until you think. Then I was like, "Wait, all right, probably, probably power surges probably aren't good for this." No, and I, yeah. I've had like, and I had like three in the last month because of storms and heat. So, one of the things I've really noticed over the years is that your power supply will be running along just fine, but if you make, especially if it's old, if you make any change to the hardware of your computer, it will just suddenly die. Mm -hmm. Power um, supplies are the most fickle. They're they're very fickle. The good thing about power supplies is that decent ones are like fifty bucks. They're they're good relative. Ones are like a, yeah. The the best ones are like a hundred and fifty or two hundred. So like yeah. you're not you're not you're not buying an arm. You know you're not like a, costing an arm and a leg to get a power supply. It's not like your 1080 Ti blew up or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in fast cast case. It's two arms. His <laughs> so legs aren't worth much. Only um oh, only no. um. What was it? Uh, what's his What's his joke? Only um, two thirds of his arms. No, three, fifths. No, no. Three, three fifths. Three fifths. Three fifths of his arms. Three fifths of his arms. There you go. I always appreciate that because that's a so that rules out the forearms. Oh God. That's so, just painful. Uh, welcome to the relay station. Who invited Ost you? Ostensibly, we talk about Star Citizen. Um, you brought me on. We're only going to talk about it sixty percent of the time. And then you also have the car on. Um, you know, you also had the car on, and and if the car is on, that means that we're also talking about SpaceX for the other like you like. 
thirty percent of the time. So we're only talking about Star Citizen about thirty percent of the time. Also, there's just not much news in Star Citizen this week, if we're honest. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I could talk about the freaking roadmap for like this entire hour and a half. I know it's great. <laughs> there's not much news. <laughs> We could we could realistically go four hours every week without an oh, issue. That's true. I've dated a girl like that. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you, you have. wish you dated a girl like that, Shiver. So, uh, you wish you dated a girl. Um, oh, oh, wow, <laughs> that's not cool. <laughs> Just oh, not gonna write. Man. Just not gonna lower myself to your level. <laughs> I said I was a mean, angry, bearded man this week. Um, you weren't wrong. This week, <laughs> <laughs> permanent status. Yeah, you're the much. reason why why HC Vertigo is never coming back to the relay station. <laughs> He's been back. It's just his fans are never <laughs> coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. We are we fairly, relay. Don't we're fairly. We're fairly n- mentally damaging. Before before we get into the into the nitty gritty details of Star yeah. Citizen, as we're getting through this stuff, I do want to mention that you are a fucking magnet for for uh, for Star Citizen for people in the Star Citizen community who are the like Star Citizens going broke, blah blah blah. The game sucks because they latch on to you and they they come all the time because they use you as like. A straw man, I think. They just they're like, he's the representation of all the star citizen people we hate. <laughs> this man right here, I'm going to direct all of my it's like the spirit bomb, but instead of like all of your hopes and dreams, all their hate is like funneled into you. I think it pops out. Uh, they either do that and, 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 or I criticize the project and they're like, he is the master. He knows all and is telling it exactly how it is. Listen to him. He hates everything. And if he says it's bad, it's the worst thing in the world. When's yeah. that ever happened? A couple of Only times. once a week. <laughs> so yeah. I just say controversial things. Such as, uh. I actually find Isengard's work far superior to Dark Thrones. Controversial. What? Did you okay. want to, you, you, <laughs> we're not going to talk about the, the other apparently controversial thing that happened. Every time Shiv and, Shiv and I are on the same show, it always ends up on Reddit. Yep. Um, hi, Reddit. Hey, hey, you're getting us really good. Uh, sorry topic. again. I'm not sorry. Uh, there's nothing to be <laughs> I'm sorry. Never sorry. sorry. Not sorry. Uh, <laughs> so there's there's this thing that, and, and I'm I'm sure that some of the the younger and some of the older members of our audience might have forgotten what this is. They might have never encountered it before in their lives, which is terribly disappointing. But there is this thing called humor. Uh, it was it was <gasps> used with great success for decades and decades. I mean, man, Monty. Python, Not on this podcast. <laughs> it's never been used here. No, it's never been used successfully by us. But. It is a thing. Uh, it's a good thing. You should look into it and uh, not hate people that use it. Because, hey, sometimes jokes are funny. Sometimes. So, we'll let's, talk about, citizen, maybe? let's talk about, let's talk about um, Calling All Dead. Or, um, I'm uh, going to... Calling All Pappies? For, for those on YouTube, to... 8 minutes 20. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm gonna move us over to the show and tell. We've got a, a bunch of videos to go through, as always, graciously provided by Haramus, who strips them from ATV and then provides them to me in an easily digestible format. Um, where do we want to start today? The beginning. Oh, the beginning. Start at the beginning. Okay. So. Uh, ATV this week talked a bit about there was a, a giant battle at Korea, I guess. Uh, yes, they're actually it's actually the, they they do it now at this time every every um every they're, Saturday. They're stealing our time slot. It's okay. They also they also go through my uh, through the captain's table as well. Um, and then I mentioned it that they they're going they go to the captain's table, and a lot of them like to come onto the captain's table. So they were like, "Oh shit." We should probably, you know, uh, we should probably like they, schedule it so we they can go on the captain's it table on a day that's not like one of the chief days for Star Citizen podcasts. Well, it's all right. It's the only day that a lot of people can play, so yeah. I understand about it. 
Um, it's good though. It was, it's fun. It's um, I like the fact that CIG is promoting it. Yeah. Um, I didn't check the the comments, but I'm sure by now people are complaining that they um, they're giving too much um, too much uh, too much promotion to streamers um, like they always do. No yes, complaint. Like, I, don't, I'm not here. I don't give a fuck about these fucking content creators. Give me your fucking information, you fucking assholes. Which to agree, I understand. Like you don't turn into tune into ATV really to watch good, my show. There was a really, really good. Uh, that was like a perfect imitation of Eris right there. <laughs> Many fucks, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, guess who? Promotes, I, I like. Guess who promotes Star Citizen right now? It's not really CIG. Look at how long ETV has gotten to. Uh, yeah, it's the Twitch streamers. So if if CIG wants to give them love every once in a while, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, actually, I... Um, on RTV t- this week, uh, Jared sort of touched on it. He's like. 3.3 is kind of scary for us. Um, mm-hmm. So all of our devs are going to just work on that, and they're not going to be on the show. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Now, I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. 3.3 is their make-or-break patch. It's it's the 3.0 of, of uh, 2018. It's yep. like one of those patches that, like, it's big, it's nasty, and um, there are many people like I had uh, someone on my on my um, stream last night who talked about how um, he, he's he works in like artificial intelligence and he, he took a look at what he what they were they're doing and he's like there's no way they're gonna get this done in time like it'll take them until March mm. you can get it done it's not it's not impossible it's just they've already they only just started it it's not gonna be done until March well yeah but they didn't just start it though that's the important part they started working on it last year yeah no. I, yeah, but he 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 mentioned like they oh they said that that they just started transferring it over from AU AUI or something like that to to C plus plus and that's going to take you know at least a year. Oh no, that know, was just months. that was just one tiny. That was like uh, what was that? That was one. Oh that yeah, that was, was the the, uh, modular, the modularity of the modularity of space stations. That's what that was. Mm-hmm. That yeah. wasn't yeah. like that was an object container streaming object container streaming they've been working on and since like last fall well the, the other thing is that object container streaming is different it's it's important to note that object container streaming is not a monolithic thing it is not a lego block that you plug into star citizen yeah nope. it, lots of little things like they even talked about an atv that they were doing um a pass on the the derelicts so they're 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 turning the derelicts into object containers, so that when you walk into a derelict, you're not you don't give a shit about anything around you in the world. It's just that object container, which means that it's going to have its own physics and everything else like that too. Unfortunately, this is a this is harkening back to they've already mentioned this is basically harkening back to the 64 bit conversion for yeah. um, it, floating point. It's really very similar. They have to go through the game and change millions everything. of different entries basically everything in the game has to work with this system and it's um it's a hey, it's Nikara, a big change quick question yeah? for you do you remember the first yeah. time that items 2.0 was mentioned 2015 like, i think it was 2015 okay. it's still I mean, not done yeah nope. I, I, because they have to go through the entire game and change every single thing Thing in the game now items 2.0 is not done but we do see lots of the effects of it right it's affecting lots of the stuff it's, that we use and yeah, there's very little that isn't done at this point but it's, just it's missiles i think yeah but it's it's still not done but missiles and thrusters it can the, also um, be you know, put in and we're using it before it's done right so oh yeah object container streaming i don't think is going to work like that though because yeah. what the hell do you do if the th- you have this underlying tech and all of a sudden you run into something that isn't an object container. Like, I don't know if that's going to work. I think, I think it'll still work. I think, I think um, you'll have some things like, for instance, if the, if the stations, if the um, truck stops aren't working or or aren't, um, uh, aren't in the, the, and that wasn't even the truck stops is they're moving the tools that create the truck stops into C++ rather than into, uh, or into Python rather than C++, right? No, no, it's in, it's no, in no, Python. They're, they're moving it. Oh, they're moving, to moving it into C plus plus. plus. Um, so, but well, this is this is the uh, this is the thing we're talking about right here. The the, the, the yeah. doing this. This doesn't. This already exists in the universe without an object container. If what this is the did, webcam, not an object container. It's just the green screen is not 
quite set no, up. No, I'm just my my webcam's dark. Oh, I'm yeah. Get some lights. Do you have a front light? Ba, 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 ba. Uh, ba, 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 ba. But um, anyways, if this doesn't make it into an as an object container, it shouldn't ruin everything. It's just going to make it, the performance not as great around uh, um, Rex as it would have been other places. Yeah. So the the key is that object container streaming is our pieces that they put in the place. They turn big, starting big to going to small in terms of creating these object containers. And the smaller you can get with the object containers, the more performance you're going to get out of out of Star Citizen. And the key is to have enough performance from the from containerization, I guess, of these objects that um, you don't have to worry about um, uh, trying to add more RAM because it's only this much. So, like, uh, of uh, of information that needs to put out there. If that makes sense. Yeah, it was. Um... The big hope is that with object containers that uh, we won't continually use. It's actually gotten a little bit better, but for a while there on PTUs, uh, especially with like 3.1 PTUs, um, I was using like 13 to 16 gigs of RAM on Star Citizen, and that's intense. The other thing is <laughs> it just... wouldn't just be RAM saving, though, would it? Because you've got physics calculations being done as well, which are on the CPU, yep. and you've mm -hmm. got you know, again, the same rule that applies to um, objects being held in RAM, the smaller area, you've got smaller physics calculations that have to be done and sent off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it, so. so it improves performance overall, but it also yeah. will improve not just your FPS, there, but your, your latency, it'll improve, well, not latency, because latency sucks, because the speed of light's, you know, limiting factor. God damn you, physics! Um, but, uh, <laughs> but it does, in fact... Um, it doesn't. It does improve. What is it called? Um, the the whole like l l lag spike things. That when when objects are loading into the game, yeah, it yeah. should improve that as well. Well, they, um, right now it matters if someone's spawning a reclaimer anywhere because mm -hmm. it loads it for everyone. Whereas once mm -hmm. we get OCS, yep. sure, someone it shouldn't. Can, someone somewhere can load up a reclaimer, but you're you know half the universe in theory. Away, you know, in theory, you don't care. It, it, this if is the reclaimer much... is still made out of a million polygons, it doesn't matter if you're in an impossibly small 5x5 five five area, that's still a million polygons in one area that's got to be rendered. So it, no, it's not... No, the, the point that's is what, if that's if what bind calling is. is bind calling doesn't give a fuck about that. If you're standing on selling, you shouldn't slow down because somebody at Port Olisar made a reclaimer anymore. Yeah. It mm. does right now, but it shouldn't anymore. Shouldn't. Doesn't mean won't. Yet. Yeah, um, shouldn't slow down, slow you down after three point three. I mean, um, let's, this let's is be very much honest this here. Very much, this is okay. It's it. We're gonna get the first implementation, and everyone's gonna be like, "It's gonna fix it," and then it's not because mm. it's gonna be something else. That's it's not gonna be the reclaimer slowing things down. Now it's gonna be the server talking to the player, loading the and the server itself is like and there will be something. But and in many ways, that's good, though, because it's like, well, we know that this is not the bottleneck in performance. We know that this is the bottlenecks in performance. So we work on this. And then once that bottleneck's mm -hmm. done, you move on to the next one. And it's 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 progress. I mean, Paul, I, you, you play more than the rest of us. Yes, How I will say performance is much better in three much better. Yeah. Much better. Like I was getting even three point two point one like in, in the PTU, I was getting shit frames. But now when the release um outside of the heavily populated areas like the places you'd expect to have lower frames because it's got to load in all these other information um i'm getting 35 to 45 fps on average mm -hmm. and i've got a 1070 i don't have the i don't have a top of the line i mean we've got a 6700k 1070 and 32 gigabytes of ddr3 ram and on I an ssd show this video tos <laughs> bathroom or sitting on the toilet yeah oh uh, where was this from? I don't remember this one. It leaked. <laughs> <laughs> this was this, from ATV. It's from ATV? Oh, nice. Uh, um, and Chris made a joke about how uh, once they get the toilets working, the particle effects people are going to have a very interesting job. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. All I got to say is the, the, the old joke about beer being piss. There's not that much difference in terms of visual, visual, uh, visual from I mean, a foamy unless, unless yellow liquid drink, and a foamy brown liquid. Beer. Unless you drink good beer, in which case 
if your pee looks like good beer, like a nice stout, then go to a doctor. Go to a doctor? Yes. <laughs> you know you're drinking too much beer Do when you look go. at your pee afterwards and you think, that's got a good head on it, that has. <laughs> Wait, were you looking at your pee or? Uh, so, yeah. uh, yes. how about the 300 oh, wow. i guys? Yay! 300 i rework. This has been the thing I've been kind of waiting for forever. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I just say it? Can I say it? Because because one of the things that Star Citizen, I, I think there's some some big, like um like like big hip loving people in Star Citizen. Get a development team because every ship they're producing now, all the reworks become thick. Oh yeah! Like they just got like like now suddenly Origins got some hips. Like the three hundred I got some hips out of that out of that. It went from being like sleek and like nineteen eighties sexy to being like wow, hello nineteen nineties rapper girlfriend. Um, <laughs> just saying, you know, just saying. Um, I, I like love, the thickness. I love this. Uh, three fifteen P is my first ship, and Paul um, is pretty down with the thickness. I yeah, that he, thickness. <laughs> Have you um, met Cam? <laughs> Actually, I don't think I have. You have. Um, I have. She was at yeah. She was at um um Pax uh, East the oh, year that you guys. Yes. Were Sorry, that pack was a long time ago, man. <laughs> okay. Well, talking about the ship. We were um, talking about the ship. My, my favorite thing about this is that they fixed cargo because everyone was like. Well, 300 eyes is supposed to be able to carry things, and it can't. So, fix it, and they did. They have uh, they put in a cargo lift, which is awesome, and it carries eight SCU, which actually isn't too horrible for a little tiny ship. Better than a, it's like twice that of a of a start ship. Yep, mm -hmm. it's it's a good look. I really like what they changed with the rear view. Like they've doubled the spoiler kind of, and it mm -hmm. kind of yeah. forms like a pleasing like. Uh, honeycomb at the back. Really like it. Um, also, does it just me, or is there a Netflix and chill caption that thing? Oh, oh totally. Definitely. In the back. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. They took it out of the beta, they took it out of the bang stang, and put it in the 300. Now, what um, are we going to call this one then? Uh, we got to come up with some overtly sexual name for the 300 series. The 300, damn. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, I hate myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <Only> right now, <laughs> Shiver, what are your what are your thoughts on the three hundred rework? I'll, I'll quote what Takako said when she saw it, and I said, "That's your ship." She said, "Oh, awesome and Segoy. Yep. Okay. Just say it in that tone. Awesome and Segoy. I can't do that tone. <laughs> uh, it's got have... a lot more space in it now, now though and I think that's um, showing a lot more in the origin things that luxury in space means I got f I've got fucking space on my ship yeah mm -hmm. uh, I now, think it was Jake in chat that said that and it's it couldn't be more true I was I was watching in in the the relay discord this week and people were saying that there's I'm showing now the uh, the work in progress white box of the 890 jump. And apparently mm -hmm. people complaining that there's too much room yeah. in the 890 jump. Um, yeah, apparently it's there's too wasted much space, room. right? Apparently. I, I think, space. I think there's apparently. something. I think people will complain about literally anything. Mm -hmm. um, Welcome to the internet. If and the fact of the matter is... If you're complaining that there's too much space in the 890 jump, clearly you have no actual concept of what the 890 jump is. It is a luxury ship. So most ships are these like tight, compact things that you squeeze into like sardines, right? And it's very uncomfortable. The 890 jump is not some sardine can tin. It's like one of those lobster tanks you get at the very front of Red Lobsters where all the lobsters are free to sort of move around a bit. It's still a container, but they've got mm -hmm. room and luxury and they can breathe a little, you know? Especially it's the difference... after all their friends have been killed. Yes. It's the... <laughs> <laughs> it's, the... it's the difference between a fishing hauler and a luxury yacht. 
the every ship we had so far is like a fishing hauler or a uh, like a salvage you know ship or like an exploratory, exploratory vessel or like a or like a battleship you know or like some sort of capital ship, ship. Really, all of the or, other ships or like a like a like a driller rig. You know, the in, use in, in, of the eight ninety is I fly up to you in my eight ninety, and I look out the window of my eight ninety at you, and I go like this. Exactly. You wind yeah. the window or, down first, I take it. Exactly. You wind the window down. Yeah. So, but yeah. it also, or you wind the window down and be like, get in, nerds, we're doing space cocaine. You yeah. know, um, yeah. like, there's no purpose to the damn thing. <laughs> it, there is a purpose, but the purpose perfectly fits with the way they've designed it. The purpose is to transport VIPs, specifically yeah. incredibly wealthy people who don't <laughs> want to be on a, in a sardine can. No, so. they don't pay. They don't pay lots of money to go from point A to point B to be in a sardine can. They yes. want to be paid. Let me tell you a secret. I don't drive a Mazda two because I think it's the most comfortable, luxurious, and spacious car around. <laughs> <laughs> That's good because it is. You don't drive it because of all those kids you ran over. Ooh. Oh, that's too dark. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, fuck you all. <laughs> Christ. At least, at least he didn't make a mind comp joke. That's all I'm going to say. Well, I mean, he did that before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did that before the stream. <laughs> so. <laughs> I also. Like, we're going to end up on Reddit again. Yay. <laughs> I like, like the, I said I like before, the, um, there's this thing called humor. Look it up. Because <laughs> we fucking um, need to. <laughs> Send your oh, definition okay. of humor too. I'm, I'm I'm pulling it back. I'm pulling it back. I'm gonna talk about the the Kovalex, uh Amazon locker thing that they have got going on now. Oh yeah, sure. Which I like. Hey, fire away. Um, for those of you who do not, I don't know if this is an international thing or if it's just in the U.S. Maybe in Canada as well. But Amazon has these things called Amazon lockers, which they have in like movie theaters and grocery stores and like like convenience stores and gas stations. So if you live in a place like I do, where you live in a, like an apartment complex where the like you don't want to have your package put on the front door, think it's too dangerous, you can go to a locker. And those lockers, they have deliver. They go to these lockers, they put them in, they punch in a code, and then they send you the code. And so you have to go. You go there, you punch in the code, and the door opens, and then you can pull your package out. So it's it it protects your package from getting stolen by people. Um, I've got a jock that and, does that. I don't know what that means, but okay. It's a hockey joke. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> so uh, and I'm glad that in, in, that they're they're putting that in there because it adds a little bit more flavor to the universe, but also makes it it's a it's a way of them saying, yeah, the whole like receptionist idea was fucking broken. So let's not do that again. Um, it also makes more sense that if uh, sometimes you're going to have to go to a um, truck stop and deliver a package because people live in those truck stops or people mm -hmm. go to those truck stops so oh des <laughs> i need to have des on again <clears throat> yes we do yeah i think you should be on I, th I think you should be our fifth guest on every uh our fifth member on everyone just des in a little Great. corner yep. i've got a pun guys you're on thin ice you know how in some programs you get that guy who does sign language we can have Des do that, but with jokes. Mm -hmm. That's how we get some humor on the show. Yeah. Wait, wait, hang Finally. on. Finally, do puns count as humor? Yes. yes. Okay. They're Excellent. the lowest form of humor, next to mimes. But <laughs> <laughs> but you can kick a mime. You can't kick a pun. Nope. I mean, you can. You can pick a, pick a, kick a punster really hard. Sure. And it's very satisfying. Okay, so uh, before we get to questions, by the way, ask us some questions. We've actually got uh, a few. We, we should probably uh, touch on the main topic of the day. Yeah, we've got, yeah. We've, before we we've go got to questions. two so far. So if y'all can can throw us some questions, exclamation mark, question mark. Uh, I see that Fastcart beat me to it. I was about to type that. Uh, throw us in some, some questions, because if you don't, I'm going to sing. Uh, I'm going to sing some mountain goats. Can't you sing any sex pistols at least? Do they do I Love Sex and Candy? No. Who they did that? a cover of My Way. I don't know what that is. 
I don't know if I know any Sex Pistols. Which my way? Are we talking about Sinatra? Yeah, it was just, they did a cover of the Sinatra version of uh, My Way. My, my Way. Okay. You've never, you've never heard God Save the Queen? That way. Anarchy in no. the UK? Come on, everyone knows Anarchy in the UK. Anarchy in the UK. Yeah, uh, no, yeah. I know that I know the the not, sort of the beat, yeah. Not much of a Sex Pistols. Sorry. I played the freaking s- s- oh, Never mind. <laughs> never mind. I know the Sex Pistols. Just can't I'm bring culture on to the fucking show. Uh, okay, so again, let, let's let let's let Nakara like like gush here for like fifteen minutes because I know he wants well, to. Well, about what? Some SpaceX stuff, though. Oh, okay. uh, I, I was going to say. Gonna, are, we gonna touch on, are we going to touch on the roadmap at all? We are. I was actually going to be be transitioning <laughs> us to the roadmap now instead of SpaceX. We're going to do SpaceX between the roadmap and questions. Okay, because there's something I want. I want to. <laughs> proverbialate about the oh SpaceX. proverbialate yeah wow good word um so nikara you just put a, an article up on uh over on that weird site that does some stuff sometimes relay uh it's, it's in the chat i don't know why or who these guys are but you put an article up on that do you want to tell us what it's about uh, okay, so on the evening of Thursday, July 26th, um, CIG accidentally released uh, a roadmap that they had been working on um, that was not final. Um, and apparently, Paul kind of clued them in on that by accident. <laughs> <laughs> they watch us. Yep. Funny story. Apparently, no. Zylo likes to lurk in all these different stream chats. Hi, Zylo. Hi, Zylo. Um, but uh, regardless, um, it was changed a little bit, and then it was changed back. There, It's almost exactly the same currently as it was when they leaked it. Um, now, it could change next week. It could, and that is definitely... There's two disclaimers in my article that say that exact thing. Um, but as it currently looks, basically here's what they've done. All of the gameplay features that they had before in 3.3 have been moved out to 3. Point, some of them to 3.4, some to 3.5, some to 3.6. Um, most of them to 3.5. However, they've replaced almost all of them with other gameplay mechanics. Um, some of them are improvements on existing gameplay systems, but about half of them are new things as well. Um, Asteroid mining is going to come in. Um, they're going to improve planetary mining. All ships will be getting ping and scanning um, properly. And group system will be improved, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but one of the other things that they're focusing on pretty heavily, it looks like, is AI, um, FPS AI will actually be in 3.3, and they have missions, a weapon refactor, and um, a couple other parts on the schedule that are specifically related to that. <clears throat> Am I tripping out, or did they also say that they nearly had FPS AI ready for 3.2, but they yeah. was like they weren't quite happy enough with it? So that, it's it, it a, a little bit too much jank for them. Well, the, you also got to remember that FPS AI was also scheduled to have an upgrade from 3.2 to 3.3. So instead of instead of releasing it for 3.2, they just continued to work on it as they would for 3.3. So that's the reason why. FPS AI is massive in this patch. There's like six or seven different features. It's almost like something that misses one patch will still just make it into the next one. Yeah, mm -hmm. crazy. Pretty much. But I mean, but I mean, instead of instead of getting a basic jank version, I think we're gonna get a little bit less janky version, just a slight less jank. Like they just so, took a little bit of the jank off, like like with like, like, like a little uh, pickaxe and just pick it off and then toss it in the garbage. Still janky, just not as janky. The two things that they look like they were trying to do, uh, trying to change towards, is um, thank you, Niskavian. Um, it looks like they were trying to move towards strengthening the gameplay mechanics that are already in there because people do seem to be enjoying the way the game is playing right now. Um, and also making the universe more alive, which is what the FPS, FPS AI will do. Um, all those you know, random places you arrive in the world will actually have other characters. Mm -hmm. People who will shoot you. 
should be fun. Um, I'm looking forward to the big thing I'm looking forward to is there right now there are missions in 3.2 that's like security is like, yo, we found this missing cargo um, at a dump spot. And uh, in the personal missions, you say, hey, we dumped this cargo that we stole in this dump spot. So I'm looking forward to going to either one of those missions and either being like, hey, what's up, Joe? And then just going to pick up the cargo and take it away or come in guns blazing to kill the dirty, dastardly pirates and then reclaim the cargo. Because that's what it does. I mean, it was built around the idea that you'd have a handful of, uh, of FPS um, enemies that you're going to have to deal with coming in. Um, because like there's there's usually like a um, a facility you have to like like a outpost you have to go into. Um, thank you, Eris. Thank you so much. Uh, That's my mating wave. <laughs> 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 Apparently, you're mating with Carbine Edge. All right. Okay. <laughs> Make sure to tell Mrs. Eris. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the other thing that was probably most notable is that, and I really noticed this. They've more or less, I mean, not completely, but they've more or less cleared the decks for 3.4 and 3.5. Mm-hmm. They took a lot of stuff out of them. And I very much think that that is to give them some breathing room to try and figure out after 3.3 is out how badly they broke the game with object container streaming and network bind culling because they're such huge technical pieces. Well, um, on, on top of that, you have to think about this. The... Other than server meshing, those are the last pieces of core tech that they need for the game. Yep. If once they get that done, and they get um, that they need to work on servers mesh- meshing, but server meshing is not something that's brand new or interesting or different. It's boring. It's something that's been done a thousand times by many other uh, other games over the last twenty years. So you're not talking about uh, some sort of new breaking technology. Not that object container streaming is new breaking technology, but that the way it's just big and it. it's just big and important. A big, yeah. big, sorry, three things: big, important, and really hard. It, mm-hmm. But it's not like absolutely groundbreaking. No, um, I wouldn't say it's. I would say that there is at this scale. I don't think it's been done yeah. this way at this scale. Let's, uh, it's let's, been done let's in be like fair. other ways. Nothing's but, been done at this scale. At this scale, there's no. never been an FPS at this scale. There's never been a flight sim at this scale. There's never been anything, anything, anything at this scale. I was but, watching but that's that. the thing. That's that's the glorious thing about this. This is basically a lot of stuff that's been done before in separate games, mashed together and thrown into a massive universe. That's a, that's mm-hmm. that's essentially what it is. It's like, oh yeah, it's not really innovative. They've done other games have done this better. Yeah, but have they done it on like the scale of an entire moon? This game, <laughs> this, this game did this. This game did this. This game have all like there's no one game that's done all the things, and we don't yet know if it's going to work or if it's going to be good. Yeah. It could fail horribly. It could be a not fun game. Like it could really just, are good. It could just not be fun. We don't know, but it's damn fun watching them try. Well, what, one of the things that's kind of nice with this approach though, is I really don't think that's where we'll end up because if it's not fun, they'll just keep changing it yeah. until it is. Um, they're not going anywhere, clearly. <laughs> um, so, so I, on, honestly, one of the things people love about 3.2 is it is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but, people enjoy, th- you know what, the only thing that I don't like about 3.2 is that there are still crashes. That's, like, if it didn't crash at all, I'd probably be playing it eight hours a day. It's <laughs> just blasting rocks with my mining lasers. <laughs> I wouldn't, because there's other things I want to play instead. Tomb Raider, Monster Hunter World. You could I just play those games. I had, games to, put, I had to put a tiny bit of time <laughs> into No Man's Sky again this week because is that actually decent? I've heard it's. I've heard it's decent. It's decent. It's still not amazing, but it's much better. Uh, oh man, Sargareth! Did don't get see? me started on Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I've been showing my daughter Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I am so stoked to play that co-op with her. Like, you don't even know. I'm excited for that freaking game, is this, okay? Is this another Pokemon Go game? The one that went everyone in the entire world pretty much went mad for for about a week and then just sort of Actually, Pokemon Go is doing really well right now. Pokemon Go has had a resur- resurgence. It's improved the game, and it's actually a good game to play now. Um, for But 
they wasted a lot of potential early on. Yeah, but they, they didn't did. know what they were doing. The company that, that made it didn't, didn't didn't know what they're doing. Yeah, similar to CIG. Um, and they they figured out what they were doing later, and then they were like, oh wait, yeah, this is this is what we can do, and so and now it's good. It's very, it's a very apt analogy for for for, for Star Citizen, yeah. which is like it started There's out everyone was super excited Pokemon, about it, and then they, everyone go, lost interest, and then pulled Pokemon, it back. Pokemon Let's up, Go Pikachu so. and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee are remakes of uh, Pokemon Yellow on mm -hmm. Switch, full 3D, with simplified catching of wild Pokemon. You can import some of your Pokemon Go Pokemon. It's restricted to just the original 151. But mm. you can actually bring a second player into your game to play along with you. Uh, and Pikachu or Eevee, whichever game you buy, rides, al excuse me, rides along on your shoulder the entire time. That's cool. Thanks for telling us, Rick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't get it. So uh, that, that's Morsi. probably a good thing. Yeah. Oh, do you want me uh, to actually burp like, like Rick does? Because Yes. Mm. Yes. Oh dear God! Oh, He's God. gonna vomit. Um. Anyway, um. I wanted to mention that. Uh, um, I haven't played it much because it's it, it's it's a total straight ripoff. But um, uh, Jura there's a new world Jurassic called Jurassic World, yeah. world Al Jurassic World Alive on mm -hmm. mobile. That yeah, you're basically Pokemon Go but with dinosaurs. There's also one for um, Walking Dead. There's like lots of stuff yeah. I've been copying, Ooh. it, but Pokemon Go is the best because guess what? It's uh, it's freaking Pokemon, man. <laughs> oh, jeez, <geez>, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I, so am I the only one who's been playing a PC game? Uh, no, I have. I've, I've been know. playing okay. Star Citizen and Stellaris, and Stellaris has ruined my fucking sleeping schedule. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm playing the that. Star Trek New Horizons mod for Stellaris. It's fucking uh -huh. amazing. I can't, awesome. I'm like, amazing mod. So like Stellaris is one of those games that came out and was like, yeah, not bad, uh, not great. I've been when it first uh, came out. trying uh, No Man's Sky a bit. <laughs> and after after about three years or so now, that since it's since its initial release, Stellaris has turned from being like an eh, game to like if you enjoy strategy or or um you know, uh, grand Forex. strategy games and 4X games. It's a, a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. So um, the first part is 4X. Like the first like half the game is 4X and the second half is like a grand strategy, like a like a Europa, Europa Universalis or something else like that. It becomes, comes in and it's it's a fantastic because you don't realize it happens. Like by the time you reach that point, you're like, oh shit, I'm doing fleet battles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, we've only um, got good. three yeah. questions. Um, We've got two minutes until question time. I'd like to make a slight announcement here before I ask Nakar if there's anything new about SpaceX. I am oh an announcing a pending announcement. So, okay. I believe that next week. Can I pre order it? Yes. <laughs> Except you shouldn't uh, pre order stuff, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm sorry. Um, That's too good. <laughs> next week, during the patron meeting after the show, I'm going to be announcing to the patrons something that we're going to be trying to do as a new show. Then the weekend after, during the regular show, I will be telling the rest of you, uh, who choose wisely not to pray Trinify us, uh, what that show will be and when the first air date will be. But keep an eye out for something possibly new coming unless we decide at the last minute that it takes way too much damn time and we choose not to do it, which happens all the time over here at Relay, if I'm honest. Uh, is that the Relay version of Love Island you wanted to do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we don't have Love Island here. What's I've heard Love about Island? it. I no, it's, I don't even uh, want to know. I don't even want to know. Nakara, has there been any good SpaceX show. news this week while we wait for more people to ask us questions? Because if you don't, I'm singing some mountain goats. Um I don't know how to fit it into 15 minutes. Um <laughs> you don't have 15 minutes, you got about three. <laughs> I have three minutes. Like uh 
Yes. So SpaceX has flown two missions in the past week or so. <laughs> um, wait, wait, Jesus. Before before we go on, two missions in a week. Can Not anyone... only that, <laughs> they have another mission next week. Can, like, <laughs> are they, they are they're still on pace to to launch more missions this year than any other country has what will, will, will do this year, right? No. No. Because China has decided that base is their thing and they went from like it's like 15 launches last year to a planned 36 this year, I think. They're launching like everything. Um but they'll beat anyone except China. <laughs> Well, it'll um, be China next year. I mean, it's, it's pretty on, good that a private country, next year, right? a private company, company, is beating everyone except for, you know, um, and the world's largest economic superpower. The, it is notable that basics uh, was the they're bigger than the US, launch. Morty. <laughs> SpaceX, SpaceX was the biggest launch provider in the world uh, last year. Um, mm-hmm. It beat all all countries and all companies. Um, and that was that was with 18 launches. They look like they're going to have 24 launches this year, uh, but that will probably fall below China because China decided to just go crazy. Um, well, they couldn't let SpaceX win. Apparently not. <laughs> yeah. well, it's a bit easier for China they to also... launch rockets because they're near Australia, and in Australia all you have to do is just sort of let them go, and they just fall into space. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That's what I've heard. Well, actually, the real reason it's easier for them is they don't give a shit about people or the environment mm-hmm. um, they'll launch right over over population centers they don't give a yeah. fuck yeah, yeah. They've, been, <laughs> they've been dropping they've been dropping uh used rocket stages onto people's houses yeah um <laughs> which is nice uh <laughs> so many jokes so so many jokes and they're so bad uh, i'm not i'm just carry on so um yeah they launched two missions in the past week uh they recovered both of them on drone ships one of them was very difficult they had very high seas, very high winds, and they landed right on target. Beautiful. Um, they tried to catch the fairing uh, for that launch, but uh, and they were they almost got it, but the winds were so high that it just couldn't catch the the ship couldn't catch up with it. Uh, they think that they'll probably get the next one. They should have got this one if fairing. the weather wasn't terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So the ter- the fairing is the um, the nose cone of the yeah, space the nose cone. splits yeah. in half. It splits in half when um, when uh, they get up past in- max 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 yeah. Q. Yeah. 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 When they get up when they get up uh, past uh, the border of space. <laughs> That's um, science, Morty. <laughs> so it's basically a giant carbon composite um, shell that protects mm-hmm. the spacecraft, um, but it. Each one of them costs SpaceX six million dollars to make, um, so getting it back would be really nice. So they've been trying to recover them. How do they like? Just they just float? Do they just like find where they are and they so, pick them up? They no, the that's the that's the problem. So the first thing they did was they tried to land them in the ocean. That worked, and mm-hmm. they've been able to get back several that are mostly intact or almost completely intact. But the problem is uh, you get saltwater intrusion in them, and, yeah. and they, you can't use them again. Um, so they started trying to catch them with a gigantic net on a huge ship, um, and, and using this. and using GPS guided parafoils um, on the actual fairing itself. Oh, so they, like it just the, the fairing will deploy something that'll slow it down to yep. try to like guide it down rather than and then they'll try and catch it in a net. Yeah, I saw um, this documentary about this is... a, um, a recovering alcoholic who was going into space uh, on a he converted a nuclear missile. And the fairings on there came off, and the, the two engines managed to come out on there. It was very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> nice. Um, I love First Contact. Um, best <laughs> also, movie. Best movie. Also, also um, okay, so I got, I got more things to talk about. Go. Um, so those two missions happened the last week. They have one coming up next week. The big unexpected thing that happened like two days ago was everyone expected they had a new booster at the Cape. They, mm-hmm. Everyone expected them to roll that one out for the next mission. They didn't. Um, the t- um, the mi- the booster that launched the first Block Five mission um, suddenly reappeared and looks like they're going to reuse it for this mission coming up next week, um, which will be the first reuse of Block Five. That is important because Block Five is the way of the future. Reused. It's yeah. designed to be reused ten plus times, and so. Um, 
Yeah. The, the thing so, that got me most this week actually was I think it was Telesat CEO on Twitter talking a little bit about th- how much they saved by going with SpaceX for their launch. That wasn't Telesat. That was Iridium. Sorry, Iridium's CEO Iridium. talking about and how much all, they they. Yeah, it's he also was the saying, reason why the U.S. Air Force and uh, is doing the same. They're yeah. like, yeah, well, fuck it, we can save a lot of money on fucking SpaceX. Oh, so Iridium, you mean we could build like three satellites just for yeah. free? Just yeah, for free, for free with the same for the cost of one launch. Okay, yeah. um, <laughs> so so here's the deal, okay, right? We'll when, when when Iridium Iridium basically they wanted to replace their whole constellation. It's seventy five satellites. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's a lot of that's ten launches. And their options at the time in 2010 were SpaceX, which was brand new and it launched like once on the Falcon 9, or um, ULA uh, with the Atlas V. That's $200 million, $200 million per launch with the Atlas mm-hmm. V. Instead, they went with the, with the Falcon 9 for $60 million a launch. So they saved on the order of, uh, oh boy, 10 launches, that would have been $2 billion with ULA. Instead, it was $600 600 million. million. So $1.4 billion by going with uh, SpaceX instead. And uh, apparently their shareholders were quite happy about that. (laughs) Oh, shit. That's not even mentioning, like, the... um... The companies like the um, what was it, Telstar? Well, it was the company that's in in um, in India. Um, the ones that the Indian couldn't launch tele- for. Yeah, the, the Indian telecommunications yeah. company that had no ability to launch satellites, and they they they. Intel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that would have been ahead. a perfect name for 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 that. I swear to God, if they didn't use that, oh my God. Just, just to say a giant F you to Intel, just to, to call themselves Intel. But um, they um, uh, they launched, they're the ones who volunteered to launch on all the reusables, the reused. Yeah. Oh, that, like, that was SES, yeah. Yeah, because they were just like, they're just like, fuck it, we want to save money. Like, mm-hmm. we need to get satellites into space, and that, that's we'll, just going to we'll cost us less. Chance, so it, 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 it blows like, up. Take it. Yeah. SpaceX's two best customers, Iridium. Because they signed on a huge contract very early on, and SES because they've been the ones who are like, "Oh, you want to reuse that rocket? We're up. Yep, yeah. let's do it." Um, oh, you want to do this other? Cra- oh, secondary flight? Sure. Well, you want to do up. a crazy no thing? Yeah. Sign us up. I think. Yep. I think it's also they also get discounts. I'm sure for doing that. I'm sure SpaceX is like, "Yeah, we'll cut a couple million off of that off of that cost for you." And they're like, "Sure, if it blows up, it's practically the cost of the uh, the." Well, the, satellite. Thing, the thing is that a lot of companies don't want to do that because they have a 300 or 400 or 800 million dollar satellite on board and they're like mm-hmm. what if it blows up then we're fucked I, um, I mean i get that but almost for the savings you'd make over like if you launch with spacex twice and ula twice you've got the savings there to build another 300 million dollar satellite right yeah like um, right there and satellite technology is also getting cheaper yeah. so as rocket technology gets cheaper and satellite technology gets cheaper okay it be- nakara so uh there's well, still quick, i have quick yeah i know i know um one of the things i wanted to mention the telstar 19v satellite which was the first of those two launches in the last week was the largest geostationary uh communication satellite ever launched period by anyone um sorry commercial there have been military satellites larger but Commercial satellites, it's the biggest one ever launched. It was seven metric tons, um, which is insane. Uh, it's also impressive that it was launched on a single stick rocket rather than a heavy. Um, so, um, uh, but, uh, the next launch is August 4th, and it is the Telcom 4 launch, also known as Miraputi, uh, which is. Uh, can't remember the nationality for that launch. Um, now you're gone for two weeks, so you won't be covering am, any of the launches for the next two weeks, correct? I might cover this one because it's right after I get back. Excellent. Um, so we're going to have to wait and see. Uh, other really big important thing coming up. Um, on August 3rd, um, NASA is announcing who the astronauts will be for the first Boeing and SpaceX uh, commercial Crew launches. Nice. Um, And also some updates on the program. 
uh, Vice President Pence was supposed to do these updates, but Boeing had a problem, and he doesn't want to be someone who delivers bad news. Because he has no um, balls. Boeing had an issue. They um, they were trying to do a, they were doing a static firing of their launch abort system for the Starliner, and they had uh, a valve. Basically, what we understand is that we believe they had a valve stick open on the engine, and it sprayed hydrazine all over the test stand and the vehicle, which is it's incredibly toxic stuff and mm-hmm. cancer causing. Yeah. So it's really it's going to take them a, a while to clean up and figure out what they need to do because they have to do that was testing before they were going to do the pad abort test. Mm-hmm. They have to do the pad abort test before they're allowed to launch. It's a requirement of the program. So they're delayed for a while and Pence mm-hmm. didn't want to then announce a delay, so he <laughs> decided to opt out. <laughs> nice. That's um that's just Okay, we got a half hour left. Anything else in the car? No, let's just go to questions okay. or I'll come up with something Paul, else to talk about. Right. <laughs> it, it is every time the car is on. We do get a good 15 minutes of space talk, don't we? It's there, lovely. There was like, and there was also like a dozen launches this week that I didn't talk about. I this know. It was a freaking crazy week it in was space. Insane. Welcome, welcome to the new space age where we're just yeah. launching rockets because we fucking can. Yeah. Like it's, it's the 1960s all over again. Oh, we got a new rocket design? Send that bitch up. You know, that's pretty much what they're There's doing. There's like half a dozen new launch providers coming online this year. Like yeah. it's crazy. Okay, let's go to the first question. <laughs> so it's really then... taking off. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. We're going to go to the first question. <laughs> then Shiva's going to ask the next ones as, as I run to the, uh, the washroom. So, Paul... Uh, welcome to the MVP club for your Galactic Historian articles. How does it feel? And that Thank goes you. from Fastcart. Also, Paul, ah, good job. Thank you. Um, it feels weird because um, I feel like the the last uh, girl to be picked for the dance at the prom. Um, because, like, MVPs, I didn't even know they still existed. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like at all, um, and I found out they did exist because Zylo message sent us put a message in my Galactic Historian on a uh, chat on Discord was like, "Hey, congratulations on getting MVP." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm MVP. It feels good. Um, one thing it does feel good about is that um, it actually has promoted uh, the show a lot more, and a lot of people, a lot more people are taking. A look at my latest, the, the, like the first episode, and I've got pretty much nothing but positive feedback. People are like, "Oh fuck, this is great! It's short to the point. It gets all the information you need across, and it gives you the reason why this is this is important information to know." Um, and I did it in under ten minutes. So, and uh, my goal is to do this kind of going forward, and I hope um, it'll help people out with kind of good context for what the lore is, so that you don't just walk in and be like, "Oh, space and shit!" Like, uh, oh. Probably not a good idea. It's like, what the fuck is this UES <laughs> UES bullshit, huh? I don't give a fuck who who you work for. You what is that? Some sort of mining company? It's like, no, that's 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 the Navy. You're about to fight the Navy. <laughs> not a good idea. Don't fight the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Whatever, may I, may whatever, the next question? whatever legatus douchebags. Like that's the head of the the military. You're just you literally just insulted the head of the military. You're about yes. to die. <laughs> yes. yes, Shiver, you can ask the next question. Because I've got the perfect voice for this one. It's from Fastcart. It's just over two months until CitizenCon. How are you preparing for it? I'll be bringing wet wipes, not for my hands, but for my whole body. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I've been bathing in pure barbecue sauce just to get my body ready for the <laughs> amount of uh, smoked meat I'm going to inhale. Is, Not is even going to eat I the saw shit. You just going to spank so you was tenderized. Snort it. <laughs> How I'm, you doing that, I'm preparing. I'm preparing by buying extra bar doors, like extra bars and locks, so that people, when people knock on my door and be like, "Paul, I need a fucking place to sleep," I don't. I'm, they don't turn into the hotel pub, you know. Um, Paul, I'm showing up at your house at midnight on the first Cam's, night. Pants. Cam. Cam. 
Cam has said that she has no problem having having it be a hotel, but she's gonna charge um, more than the than the local bed and breakfasts for 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 showing up. Three hundred dollars a night. Uh, how about instead of paying like, your rent, like I'll bring you a bottle of Sortilege. <laughs> Sortilege. Uh, Sortilege. It's actually one thing. We've um, Pyro found a place you can actually buy Sortilege down here. Really? So, yes. Nice. So, and if, he, if it's if it's one of those places where if he doesn't if they don't have it you can ask for it and they'll it's, buy it for it you. is good shit yeah I'm okay. asking the next question yeah okay Space Age Hero asks I missed last week do you all like the Apollo starting with Eris uh no it's an RSI ship RSI ships have absolutely no character life feeling or any redeemable qualities whatsoever in their ship design as a concept for a medical vessel it's great but uh aesthetics wise it looks like a loafer like like one of those loafers that your Latin mom or Italian mom beats you over the head with. It looks like a bloody loafer or like a wedge She's you strong. stick under a door. Okay, so no, we know Eris's opinion of like the Apollo. Er- How about we Eris, go with the shiver? Er- er- Eris, I've, I've, I've got a headache. I think it's come, 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 oh, oh, that's what it is. Okay. Oh, it's so a that, bad that opinion. A I see. Your bad opinion had to get out. <laughs> it was causing you such okay. pain. <laughs> Shiver, what do you think of the Apollo? I think it's very pleasing aesthetically. And uh, due to the response on Reddit, a lot of people want one, but they want a warship one, not medical. So I'm kind That's of worried just about the medical career. Dumb. Where am I going to get? Where am I going to get healed? Um, I don't know. So, Paul, what do you what do you think of the Apollo? It looks like a, a Federation ship from the Star Trek, Star Trek universe. Um, I also... I think it looks cool. Um, I think... Um, that it will, I, I fear that the medical uh, profession will never be used um, or rarely used um, because so many people are looking at the meta of, of medical and going, fuck it, why should I get healed? I'll just go throw myself out an airlock. That way I can uh, respawn with my full character. I'll just 40% kill myself of your times. income goes to the UEE in taxes. That's the problem about that is that they haven't confirmed that since the last time they talked about it, they basically got rid of that concept. They're, they're not going to, so, they're not going to confirm that until they see that everyone's just throwing away their characters. And they're like, sorry, everyone, the UEE has instituted a death tax to pay for yeah. the war. The state tax, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I love it. What's what they're called? They're either called death taxes or estate taxes. Uh, just, I know, I know. They I know. exist. It's, they are a real thing. <laughs> they're real things. I had to spend a year alive for tax reasons. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not really much of a thing here, so it's weird for me being they Canadian. Are. Well, kind of. Nowhere near as bad as the U.S. Yeah. I mean, nothing but here is as bad as the U.S. We have very little tax here that on, yeah, on inheritance. But anyway, um... I love the Apollo, personally. Um, I I really like RSI ships, actually. Um, I like that they're super old designs, and they look like super old designs. And I love that it looks like a mini constellation, kind mm-hmm. of, you know? It, it looks it's like... So, it's they, so in line with their so other it, ships. It looks like a tiny, thick constellation. <laughs> because, again... CIG likes the junk in the trunk. Apparently. I'm just going to say, apparently, in space, they like them with big hips and a big booty. Because that's that's what all these ships have now. Don't know why. So but- this, is, this is slightly out of date. But, uh, I mean, basically put the Apollo, I'd say, right, right next to the Connie on this. Because it does look like a little mini Connie. It's it does. shite. <laughs> All right. Air great ships because of Paris. I forgot about that. <laughs> there was that whole rant in the last Captain's Day. Well, uh, it's a rant everywhere. Mm. I can never not. Um, next question. The Punisher. The Punisher asks, with the extra space allowed in the new 300 series rework, do you think that they will place a toilet or shower? And do you have any other expected changes? It's a luxury I don't, ship. They'll just like they'll just like suck the fluids out of you. It's no... I mean, we're gonna have to be able to go to the toilet in our suits. 
<laughs> yes, Shiver, I said that. I saw your face. <laughs> Still suits, man. Still suits her a thing. I think a little mini kitchen, somewhere where you can roast your squirrel, something like that, that might be added. A squirrel? <laughs> yeah, a squirrel. Uh, <laughs> down here in Texas, we call them tree rabbit. Ooh, no, we don't. That, that no, we true. don't at all. Down in Texas, we call them lunch. All right, get your fucking hick right. God damn it. <laughs> hey, uh, next follow, question. Chris, we have to go through these, man. Um, we also need more questions, too. Uh, Ham Sandwich asks, what are the worst and best things about the new roadmap? Paul. Um, best things about it is that they seem to be more realistic in terms of how long it's going to take for them to actually build the, some of the, the, the features. Uh, worst things is that um, it moves all the features back to a realistic de time date so people aren't as excited. Like it goes from the hype goes from oh my god to eh. and so you get to hear all the bitching about how Star Citizen is never going to be made and everyone everyone losing their minds and going through the stages of grief before they either come come to it or then start demanding refunds. So, okay. The worst David. things is people are idiots. They don't understand. No, 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 no. What? Just talk about the roadmap. Yeah, I'm talking about the roadmap. <laughs> The worst thing about the roadmap is people. The best thing is CIG are being <laughs> honest about wh what they're doing and what they're focusing on and where they're going. And that's a good thing. And we, we have wanted this honesty since 2012. Like we've, we've been asking them for, the, for them to be open and clear on what they're working on, where their focus is, what's coming next. I'd like a bit more information on. I still think that we need some form of voting mechanic where the community can vote on an upcoming ATV focus, like a, I want, I want an ATV telling us where they are on OCS and you know, what's coming next for like what, where they are, right. Let's get status updates on, on various things. I'd like that, but no, the worst thing is people. And the best thing is that CIG are finally doing what they needed to do for a long time and, and talking to us about where the game is and just making it right out there in the open. We've decided that focusing on these mechanics is not the best idea right now. We're going to instead focus on this. And we know they showed us. That is great. Thank you. I think the best thing is that it's there. It's updated regularly. It hasn't been forgotten about. You look at some other early access projects, like their equivalent, their roadmap, their trailer board, whatever. The, they won't bother going back to it. They'll put it up. They'll use it maybe once every so often, but... CIG make use of those regularly. The worst thing about it is it doesn't tell you when Melissa Estrada is going to next appear. <laughs> Nakara? That is a, that is a valid like, complaint. I feel like Shiv is going to, to, to like refund the game if Melissa Estrada moves to another company. That's, it's a very, <laughs> very distinct possibility. Um, I wouldn't say it, but I'd say it. Okay. <laughs> as, as someone is quite enjoying the mining mechanic uh, my favorite thing is that um they're like hey that worked pretty well and they're putting a whole bunch more mining stuff into 3.3 including asteroid mining and improvements to planetary mining um the worst thing oh sorry okay i'm gonna put best thing part two they seem to be giving themselves a lot of sort of leeway and breathing room after 3.3 to sort of you know play with things and not be totally slammed with the next patch immediately. Um, and the worst thing is probably just that some of the things we wanted are now going to take longer than we thought. Um, most notably, in my mind, server meshing uh, moved back six months. Um, I think it might move back again, but because uh, it's another big, difficult piece of tech. Um... But yeah, that's about it for me. Next question comes from The Punisher. Do you give three pucks what Derek Smart or detractors think of Star Citizen? No. Nope. Tractors can talk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think we're done with that, that question. No. Only only <laughs> German tractors. That's what is the Dean. Ah, uh, yes. Detractors should... can talk. 
Dude, that's a German accent ever. I can't do accents, man. <laughs> As a Canadian, one of the few people with no accents, um, I can't do other accents. I don't know what you're talking about, eh? I don't know, eh? You hoser. <laughs> Let's go down and grab us a 2-4 and sit by the dock and drink. <laughs> okay. I discovered I discovered a classic piece of Canadian film, by the way, which was um, um, Strange Brew, which I didn't know existed. Uh, I didn't. I had no, no idea that um, Second City had a, uh, a TV show in Canada, which was essentially like the Saturday Night Live of Canada. Make sure and you also watch uh, Men with Bro- Men- Make sure you also watch Men with Brooms. Men with Brooms and Kids in the Hall I've heard of, but I didn't hear about the other one because there was I guess it's just because it was live in like the eighties. And then seeing then hearing about Strange Brew, I'm like, wow, that's some f- weird fucking movie. But I learned a lot about Canadian, like apparently the only place you can buy beer in Canada is the beer store. I well, didn't know. Not anymore. In Ontario. In Ontario. Yeah. Not anymore. Uh, in Ontario, I can now go to my local grocery store and pick myself a, a three bag thing of milk and some beer. That's the one thing that's beer. Uh, beer in a bag as well? No, we don't beer. sell beer in a bag. We sell beer um, in two fours. If you ain't going <laughs> to drink two four, you'd better not drink at all. We wow, now you're just becoming, te- now you're becoming a Texan again. <laughs> yeah, it's my only accent I got. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to be clear. Canada's really, really, really big. Um, <laughs> and, second, uh, that's actually a song. On this <laughs> planet Earth. And if Russia <laughs> keeps on shrinking, then soon we'll be first, as long as we keep okay. Quebec. Uh, the okay. USA has okay. Okay. kind of expanded has banks, but they can keep them thanks because they just don't amount. Because when you get down to it, you find out what the truth is. It isn't what you do with it; it's the size that counts. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Eric Worms. Um. Anyway, in Alberta, since I was a kid, they've just had private liquor stores. Um. Mm-hmm. You can't. And the funny thing is, here you can't. You specifically cannot buy liquor in grocery stores. You have to go to a liquor store, and they are privately owned, but they're everywhere. There's literally, like, two within a block of my house. Here, so. it used to be liquor. you could only buy yeah. alcohol at an LCBO, which is the Liquor Control yeah. Board of Ontario, uh, or liquor. a beer store. I barely know her. Mm, <laughs> now they've expanded that. out so that you can... They now sell beer and wine in uh, grocery stores, and it's fantastic. I go to pick up a loaf of bread and accidentally come out with seventy-two dollars of beer. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that's one thing I miss about uh, California. They didn't give a fuck about uh, about about who's buying alcohol and when. It's like, oh, it's eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. You want a fucking fifth of Jack? Here's a fucking fifth of Jack. It's three a.m. on a on on a Wednesday. You want to stumble fifth into the jack? A, into Here's a, a fifth of jack. A, you want to st- you want to buy some Dom Perignon? Fuck, here you go. Enjoy your champagne, Mister Crazy Person. <laughs> like, like they just they didn't care. And in Texas, where they actually have you, you have to go to a liquor store to buy liquor, but you still can buy beer and wine in um, in um, grocery stores. Interestingly, but, uh, uh, interestingly, they're doing the same thing here with um, with um, cannabis as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, with marijuana when in October when it becomes legal. Same thing happened. Ontario is going to sell it in government-owned stores. K- Alberta, it's all private stores, and you just, you know, you're going to have all these, like, little Keep in mind, weed Ontario shops just, everywhere. just elected a, a conservative government oh, that has decided that uh, climate change doesn't exist and basically is They're trying evil. to turn us into the United States, which is great. Um, well, welcome, so- brother. Yeah, <laughs> We've got a fat orange. Uh, uh, no, I can hear the daughter don't. upstairs. Uh, yeah, don't. Let's just keep going about Star Eris's, Citizen. Eris's yep. burp debris asks, have you perfected <laughs> your creation of the orbit mechanic, Paul? Have I perfected? So um, I, I didn't create it. Um, Diabolus did. He was the one who's in, he's been figuring out the different speeds and heights that you can uh, get orbits in Star Citizen. And he th- thinks he can get a uh, 600i into orbit around Selen. And just stay in orbit. Yes. So, so much like Kerbal, um, 
the once you get into into a stable orbit, you never leave that orbit. You can never degrade in Star Citizen. But um, unlike Ker Ker Kerbal, the only way you can get into orbit is by still being in the atmosphere. So you have to be just inside the atmosphere because the because you get stuck into the um, to the container of the um, of the moon. You have to get the um, gravity working, yeah. You have to get be in that gravity, but you have to go just fast enough that you're breaking the gravity, but not so fast that you completely go out of the gravity well. That's cool. Um, so I, w I stayed in orbit for like three or four orbits on a, in a Gladius uh, last night. Uh, and then cool. uh, Diablos rendezvoused with me in a, um, um, uh, a, a Herald. And then also, once we were rendezvoused, he also got into orbit. We stayed in synchronous orbit around uh, Yellow for like an orbit together. So if we can get in an 890, I'm sorry, a 600i, that means you can easily have a party, an orbit party, which sounds fucking awesome to me. I don't know about you, but like you basically turn your ship off and so everything is off, but you're still walking around and you're still stuck in that orbit. So, so what you're saying is we can create an in orbit Quarian uh, fleet of derelict yes. ships. All traveling mm -hmm. around in orbit, around. Yes, you. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. It's, it's. It's not. It's not at all designed to do that. Star Citizen is not supposed to ha be able to do this, but we've broken the physics for it. So, and it works. It's one of those features I hope they never fix, uh, or accidentally fix, even by fixing other things. Uh, the uh, Punisher asks follow up question: What is Relay's goal now that ATV has been shrunk and divided for future coverage? Uh, stay uh, tuned. I was just Panic. I was gonna say that exact Panic thing. Fear. No, uh, <laughs> no, we we're actually plans. pretty okay with it. Uh, here's a little factoid. We we're getting kind of sick of that. <laughs> transcribing an hour long um, podcast <laughs> or an hour long uh, video for basically zero notice, acclaim, or anything is exhausting. Um, and it, it wasn't Especially even, after three years. <laughs> I mean, I did it for about two years, and for the past year, it hasn't even been me or, or Nakara. It's been Sunjammer, Desmarius, um, uh, Stormy, CS, CS. Like it's been, it's been other, but it's still, it has always been exhausting. And doing mm -hmm. like a six-minute ATV takes it only takes about a half hour to do a six-minute ATV. That's fantastic. So. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we, we've got some ideas. We're working on some stuff. We're going to be transitioning possibly more into the Twitch sphere. Uh, but I think we're also going to try and cover all of the shows better, but just yeah. do, Summers. you know, not do the full transcripts because honestly, very few people need them. And, uh, I think more people would prefer like Point just form, hearing here's what stuff. happened the, yeah here's the stuff mm -hmm. we need yeah so that's our thought anyway we're we'll, we'll give you actually some actual de detail on that later we're working on um, it. on a side note i'm now putting out calling all devs uh much earlier in the week uh tuesday wednesdays if you want a summary of calling all devs also also if you like the whole thing where i just go off and rant about S spacex for several minutes um we might have something coming up for you maybe paul Hmm? You were about to say something. I wasn't sure what. No, no, I'm good. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, let's move um, to the next one. Next question. Go, Nakara. Peter Quint asks, will Hurston be in 3.3? Yes. If you yes. think so, how much money would you each put on it? Uh, Both of my houses. A billion dollars? Eris' um, left testicle. I, I will say this. I think there are two options for 3.3. Either 3.3 is garbage and we don't get anything in it, uh, or except for maybe some some minor fixes. It'll be basically 3.2.x, whatever, but called 3.3. Or we get exactly what they want us to have, which is Hurston, um, FPS mechanics, FPS AI, um, object container streaming, all that kind of stuff. Because if we do not have object container streaming, we don't have shit. So the answer is, if object container streaming is in, I believe we'll have it, and I think we will. We will have 3.3. I think 3.3 will have object container streaming. There is an outside chance that they won't, and I mean outside. They will, is in take, like, out, they will take out every other feature 
in mm -hmm. 3.3 before they'll take out object container streaming. And the only reason to have object container streaming is to have Hurston. Yeah. So I doubt that they will remove Hurston if they, so like those two are connected. They're joined at the hip. So, so my belief is I am 80% sure, 80 to 90% sure that, that, um, that Hurston will make it in there. And, um, that's only because I am 95% sure that that OCS is going to make it in. There's that 5% off chance. I still think it's going to happen, but I'm, uh, you never uh, know. Only, only a Sith deals in absolutes. Uh, like I can't, maybe, maybe an you Idris, can't, you can't hundred percent. know. so maybe an Idris will crash into CIGLA. Yeah, like that's that's, that's just, <laughs> there's probably more of a chance of OCS not of of making it than there is of of something of of a satellite crashing into uh, into CIG. <laughs> uh, so oh, wait, who was it? Stephen Mocking uh, in chat mentions that I hope you'll bring Commander Llama back on occasion. Uh, he was a stellar guest, and his pay to win piece was pretty excellent. I definitely plan to. Uh, I have uh, occupied him with other tasks recently, completely not at all related to Relay. Uh, oh, been... that reminds me. That fucking article I wrote like two weeks ago, it's still, it's still, I've heard nothing about. You wrote an article? I gave it to Nakara. Um, yeah, we need to get back on that. <laughs> okay, I, this is the first I've heard of this. Okay, no, okay. so he, he wrote an article. I did edits for him. He added more stuff to it, and we just need to get it posted, I think. Okay. I <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Because <laughs> it, like, it would have made sense before this, this whole big update thing now. Like, I'm afraid that people would be like, oh, this guy's just chasing trends. He's just trying to cover up because they moved a bunch of things from 3.3. It's like, I wrote this four weeks ago. Like, I wrote this... <laughs> totally. Uh, There's no such thing as a uh, as a Jesus patch. It's, so, for anyone that, that wants to write you know. for us, uh, here's my suggestion: get in touch with Shiver. Because, <laughs> yeah, <no doubt. laughs> because Shiver suck, is apparently. the one that keeps Nakara and I on track. <laughs> Seriously, um, nothing, that's a good look. Yeah. yeah, if you send it to me, I will berate you if you do not put a fucking space between the single word "ah" and the single word "lot." For starters, <laughs> don't don't bring your shit to me. <laughs> uh, Paul, sorry about that. I had no idea. We'll we'll get it's it. It's okay. We'll get I just it. I just sat there going. I just sat there going. God damn it! Now this article is going to make me look like I'm doing damage control for CIG when it was originally oh, we intended. Need put, we need to put it out instantly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll post it now, Eric. Great. Because let's let's, make, let's it, make the only other streamer in Star Citizen that <laughs> likes us hate us too. Because because the whole purpose of the article that I wrote it was essentially trying to be like, listen, people believing that this is Jesus patch. And I think it, it still works in terms of people being like, oh, now 3.5 or 3.6 is the patch. that I'm uh, that, That's going to be the patch that actually makes Star Citizen a game. And the answer is no. No, it's 3.5. 3.5 is not going to make Star Citizen the game. Nothing is going to make Star Citizen the game until it's done. Because yep. Jesus Path, the, the concept of a Jesus patch is a myth. It's if you can't still, handle I that. Mean, that's still, it's still relevant. No, it's, it's always going to be relevant, relevant. Yeah. until they, you know, yes, so. Yeah. But anyways, uh, that, uh, that's, that's all I was going to say. Go ahead. So I want to get through the last few questions quickly. So Peter Quint will hurt. Uh, wait, no, we got that one. Fast cart. Uh, I may have missed this discussion, but what do you think about the disco chef going into the game? I really hope it happens. Yeah. Especially because disco doesn't want it to happen. Yeah. <laughs> disco I, carried I me away against my will twice. <laughs> Literally. I I would I would like it to happen not because not because Disco doesn't want it to happen but because it's not going to look anything like Disco Lando by the time it's done. Yeah, um, well, and only the people who are around now will know will, will, will know well, who it They're was based gonna on. They're just going to call it the Disco Chef, and he's going to be sitting there dancing all the time, being like, "Hey, I'm cooking up some jambalaya, you'll, Give you'll me have some a... shrimp, bro," and yeah. then he's going to go back to cooking. I don't know why I'm really Jamaican. Want, I'm sorry. I would love for him to be Jamaican, just with a with, with an, because the one thing that Star Citizen lacks a hundred percent is diversity. Yes. Right now, it's all white, 
British or American people that are the mission givers in Star Citizen. Which I confuses think, the I shit think, out of me. I think give a, me a, give me some give me some disco, heavy a Jamaican disco chef cooking up just hey bring me bring me whatever you got man. I'll he has cook to it be into Jamaican. Something. So he has to be Jamaican so you can go up to him and say hey what Jamaican? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, CIG for for any interest in contacting L of any of Relay's staff for writing <laughs> opportunities, um, <laughs> contact all of us because maybe us. one of us will actually remember. <laughs> yeah, Jesus send the email to A L O T at Relay dot S C. <laughs> I like a lot. They're very they're very interesting creatures. They are. Uh, so <laughs> I've I've asked I get a great reference. question here. I've asked a fantastic question. Uh, giving the com- completely shitty, ugly, and disturbing aesthetic of the Apollo. Uh, how do we all feel about the announced tier system for healing? Uh, personally, I find the inverted tiers confusing. Personally, I do find the inverted tiers confusing. Switch that shit up around, CIG. Everything else goes from small to big. Small to big. Small to big. Why did you suddenly go, oh, tier three is the worst and tier one is the best on this and only because, this and nothing because else? Because they're small injuries to big injuries. It, they're the smallest of injuries to the bigliest but of no, injuries. But that's no, that's not how they did it, though. They did it tier, tier three to tier, tier one. Tier, okay, I thought tier three was, oh, shit, I've lost my head. No, 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 no that's the, that's not what they oh, did. really? They tier did three the is, I got a boo This is fucking unplayable. <laughs> Refund. What the fuck? <laughs> The way they did it is that tier one is the worst. It's the yeah. d- the fatal injuries. Yeah. Um, okay. And tier three is minor injuries. I got which a boo-boo. doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> Versus, oh god, where's my hand? Um, where's and, my watch? And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where's my watch? Oh, with my hand on the floor. <laughs> Damn. Let me just pull up my mobile. Glo- Where did it go? <laughs> oh. Shit. <laughs> uh, a two-year-old tuna sandwich asks, what ships in the leaked roadmap have you excited? And are you going to Austin Citizen Con and then crash at Casa okay. del Astrol? <laughs> I, I, hate to, I hate to break this to you folks, but none of the ships changed. Nope. <laughs> there, also, there. There, there are no, no change. There is no ships listed for 3.6. Nope, there are none. Zero ships listed, which, which is tells probably me that it's totally not not filled out yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Also, uh, we, we have confirmed. Casa del Adel Relay, uh, which we'll be stay, staying at. It's uh, it's probably going to be really crazy. Um, it's also going to be much Mars bigger than the Casa del Astro. So, <laughs> uh, no, no, no. We we uh, we rented an Airbnb in Austin because uh, Des doesn't live in Austin. He lives way far away yep. in another. He house. lives in um a little shack just outside Lagrange. Yes, he does down by the river. Yeah, in a van. <laughs> um, last question for the day: uh, the metal in Shivers' nostril asks. Eris, have your skeptical buddies changed their minds a bit on SC, or are they still very skeptical? Uh, they've actually all downloaded the latest patch. They've all tried it, I believe, and they've all said that it's playing a hell of a lot better. There's more gameplay, but it's not at a point where they think it's a game yet. And I agree with them. I think I agree. I, and interesting, that's one of the things that I found most interesting. By the way, go check out Relay, where I put up my new article today, and another reminder. Um... But uh, one of the things that I really noticed about the, what they changed was that they, I think I really think that they went, hey, 3.2 actually plays pretty well. Let's make sure the next one plays well, too. So it's basically just improving and building upon the game mechanics that are already there. Um, and I think that they also did that because they realized that on the not gameplay front, their tasks are very difficult. OCS and network mm. fine culling <laughs> i'm actually looking forward to a feature that hasn't talked about um which is the uh you're laughing at me no i'm laughing at fast Jeez. cart asking how come the car's article's up but paul isn't uh because i wrote that article like in an hour today and i just posted it on a whim and i totally forgot okay keep in mind paul, <laughs> paul sent me paul sent me a couple messages like a week ago and hasn't said anything about it since 
So no, I, I haven't because I was I was, I was figuring that something was happening and don't, then, then I found out that Nakara. Uh, here's here's yeah, I just here's I was totally relay. Uh, never totally, believe you know, that anything's yeah. happening. Just like bad no, us constantly because we are I literally use, the I, worst. I will use this moment to, to steal this and also say another thing that's important and I think everyone should uh, should be following this because I think this is the right the right way and fuck anybody if you if you think I'm wrong fuck you, um, which is. Don't try to convert people to Star Citizen. Just let the game speak for itself. If At least not right now. If, 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 if someone is interested in Star Citizen, you just say, you honestly say, oh, it's not really ready for new people yet. Or it's, you know, if you don't think it's going to be good enough for, for them to play it. Um, if, they're, if they're like, man, I don't know about this game, don't be like, oh, it's the best game ever. Just be like, okay, cool. I'll you know and let them know like hey you should check this patch out like or hey it's a free flight weekend you should try it out I heard you I know you you're interested in it the free flights are cool like that the thing I really want to ask you all is do you like the game or do you like the concept of the game because I don't play the game I don't like the game I don't have fun with it the shooting is ass I don't really like flying long distances I have nothing to do mining is kind of fun but there's still no real point I don't but like it's... the game I love talking about it and knowing about it and all these things uh, interacting with the community and being a part of this huge giant thing but, but see, none that, of that is the that's game that's the wrong attitude to be getting into the game it's not a state where you can say it's the game yet yeah? It's still alpha testing oh, I know. for mm. the game. And that's the point. It's so, there's there's no game for me to like yet. It's not I I'm crazy and I like the game in its current state. I have problems. I have things <laughs> that I want to throw against the wall and, and scream because when everything is broken <laughs> and you can just sit there like I can fly Ghost. around in a ship for fifteen minutes. Go six um, years of concept. <laughs> <laughs> but I um, but I but I also like the I, I like the game, and I also like the the the, the potential that this game can go. Because as I'm playing, I'm like, oh shit, I see where they're going with this, you know. Yep. So, um, I'm getting more on that side too. I I didn't like the game for a long time because it was very playable. Um, I didn't have a computer that could run it. I do now. Um, three point two, I like quite a bit. I enjoy playing when I play. Um, I think it's still. That's actually what kind of gives me the most hope for the future of Star Citizen is I'm actually enjoying what it is now. And it's kind of janky and half broken and most of the gameplay mechanics are missing. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, if all the gameplay is in there and it doesn't crash, I think I'll probably have a great time in the game, honestly. <laughs> um, so one other thing I wanted to mention just really quickly before we go to Shiver about this question. Uh, I'm, I want to see what the environmental blending shader looks like when it gets in there. Because I'm excited about that. Anyway, go ahead, Shiver. Sure. Pretty much just I've already said, you know, it's if your attitude is, oh, I want to get in and I want to play this game and I want to have fun, then you need to wait until there is a state where you can do that. Because right now it's you're you're supposed to be using the software and testing the software. It, it's still an official alpha test, if it's even alpha, I suppose. It's it. It it really, I I, I think you'd say it grinds my gears is a bit strong, but <laughs> it almost grinds my gears when people say, "Oh, this fucking game! I spent this amount of time doing this, and now it's broken." It's like, yeah, did you report that to the issue council? No, they never fucking do, do they? They're just too pissed off. It's like, well, mm. there's your fucking problem. Go and report it, or say I've got this problem, and you know, it, it let it's them know not so they can in fix a place it. yet. Yeah, it's not in a place yet where you're supposed to be able to log in and play for eight hours. You're supposed to hit speed bumps and report them. Yeah. And if that's not what you want to do, then just wait a bit. Paul, where can you be found? What's <laughs> happening later today? I was going to say, just point. Yeah, there you go. Astropub. Uh, your space for the Twitch. Um, at the Astropub on Twitter. The Astropub pretty much everywhere. YouTube, Instagram. Branding. Uh, Snapchat. Uh, Pornhub. I don't. I don't even know what the fuck branding I've gotten in these days. Just type in the Astro Pub. You'll find me somewhere. I'm interested um, in the Pornhub now. I'm have to go check that out. I just. I just do. I just do. Uh, just upload all of my videos to there, just because that's it's that's a, it's it's now the only it runs better than video YouTube. sharing. Yeah, because it runs better than YouTube <laughs> and it, it has less uh, less restrictions on it, so you can actually put shit on there. You you, you laugh, but there are straight up like gameplay footage on on pornhub, pornhub that yeah. people upload because people upload it's shit to pornhub because it's easier than youtube mm-hmm. 
and they get more views on it's the weirdest goddamn thing oh pornhub, I love needs, the, the guys. pornhub needs a name change like they need the pornhub and the everything else hub yeah they pornhub just need to be the, all they need, hub re, rebrand their name to to the hub and yeah. and be a uh, a youtube competitor because they yeah. could do it they could, <laughs> they could do it. they could all uh, hub game they hub, could take half the name hub. of youtube and half the name of pornhub and have you porn wait they, wait they actually own wait. that too yeah <laughs> they own a lot of those show, those those places and and the best part about them is that they're really eco-friendly and they do all these this work for charity that they do all the time they it's the time. weirdest thing to, to see to see a, a company that's really about filthy shit and being like hey it's this holiday. But Every time you about, watch some of our filthy shit, you, we also are going to give money, money to charity. Away. Yeah, but they're also <laughs> yeah. about the proper filthy shit, not the filthy shit that shouldn't exist. Not the illegal filthy yes. shit. <laughs> uh, all props to Pornhub for being a, a, oh, with God, all this for is going to get retweeted purposes. by the official fucking Twitter account, isn't it? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please retweet us, Pornhub. I would love that. <laughs> if someone wants to tell them what we've said about them and how they're an AOK company, seemingly go nuts. Um, Paul, I don't know if that's breaking up. TOS, but it's it's. Uh, uh, anyways, um, we, we got the captain's table later. later. Um, and I, if that's breaking TOS, uh, saying that another company is fantastic and does good things, there's for something humanity, wrong. Then, I, then fuck, then fuck your fuck TOS. It, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, Captain Sables later, we actually only, only three people. It's still the summer, so a lot of people are moving and, and stuff. So, like, we'll, we'll probably not go to, back to a full cast uh, again until um, late August, early September, just because, you know, people are busy. Um, so uh, we've got Meyer, um, Crucian Gaming, and um, HG Vertigo are on this week. So uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good, good discussion. Uh, Crucian, or, uh, HG Vertigo wants to talk a lot about the the economy so it's going to be an interesting discussion Ooh, going great. from like the broad concepts of 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 star citizen to what star citizen is right now and what the, what what, what it's our problems be. are with it yeah. so you know nice yeah that should be a good cast that's in two hours from now yep Twitch. tv slash the astro pub now uh nakara think uh think we'll be able to get paul's article up yeah i'll get it up right away sweet so assuming paul is uh comfortable with how its current state uh, I am. I'd like to like a. You guys guess take a look at it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll reread it. Yeah. Just just to make sure it's no grammatical errors and make sure I'm not making an ass of myself. But uh. Well, I mean that's, that's a big deal. <laughs> that's a given. <laughs> uh, Nakara, um, anything else planned for this week? I am gone for two weeks. Um, I might. There's a chance. Be back next weekend, so I might not actually miss any. Um, relay stations. Um, which is weird because I'm on holidays for two weeks, but, um, our, our current plan is that I'll be getting home on Friday night. So I might be around. Um, and also similarly, the next SpaceX launch is, um, is late the night of August 3rd or early in the morning of August 4th, um, which I think is Friday night into Saturday morning. So I might be around for that as well. So you might, I might not miss anything, really. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Shiver, what do you got coming um, up? Yeah. Uh, Dead Air coming on Wednesday and a faux Friday night show with Ms. Hart and Silence guesting. Nice. On Friday at the base. And the only thing I have is if anyone wants to uh, test read a really shitty novel I've written, throw me a message on It's Discord. amazing! It's not. You haven't read it yet. It's amazing! Well, I read half of it when it was half written and it was amazing. True. So, uh, and with that, that is all of the Star Citizen and Errata <laughs> that we have this week. I thought you were going to say Erotica. Not Erotica. <laughs> uh, though we did Are include sure? some Erotica with our Errata. Uh, we're, we got a whole lot of Errata. Uh, got a lot Cut. of Errata Erotica. <laughs> half of it when it's half written is a quarter. Yeah, actually, that's about right because. Uh, when I when I read it, it was like sixty five pages long, and um, he said he was half done, and it ended up being like two hundred and fifty pages. So I was really hoping you get at least three fifths of the way through. No, yeah, <laughs> on my on vacation, I'll finish it. Have a good week, everyone. We'll see you in the verse.